Hello everyone, it's Paleo Nerd back with what's technically a new series, but is really more like an extension of my natural history series. As I've said in pretty much every natural history video, the groups I list in those videos is based on what is known at the time I make them, and they are likely to change in the future. These updates serve to list any changes or additions made to the groups I I've covered without me having to make the entire video over again. This first update will be pretty short as I'll only be covering three new genera, so this should be a good video to watch if you don't have the time for my longer videos. First is an update to part one of the natural history of Allosauridia with a new genus described a few weeks ago that has massive implications for the relationships between Allosauridia and other theropods. That animal is Asphalto Venator vialidati, or Asphalto Hunter of Vialidad, which refers to the Canadon Asphalto formation it was found in and honors the Direction Nationale de Vialidad, further aid to paleontological expeditions of the Paleontological Museum of Egidio Ferruglio. It is known from a partial skeleton consisting of most of the front half of the body along with partial leg and foot remains, which was found in 2002. Excavations of the specimen began in 2005, and it was finally removed in 2007 as part of an enormous stone block, after which it took five years to prepare, and was compared to related theropods from 2013 to 2015, before being finally described in a paper published on December 11th, 2019 by Oliver Walter M Misha Ra Rahut and Diego Paul. His fault of editor was a fairly large animal, with the paper comparing it to Allosaurus in terms of its size, and estimating it at a length of 7 to 8 meters, or 23 to 26 feet long, and a weight of around 2 U.S. tons. It is known from the Charo Condor locality of the Canadon Asfalto Formation in Argentina, which dates from the late Tuarcian to the Bajocian of the Mid-Jurassic about 174 to 168 million years ago, making it the earliest known allosauroid. Its contemporaries include the sauropod Pythagosaurus, the Piatnitskisaurids, Piatnitskisaurus, and Condor Raptor, the Abelosaurid Aeoabelosaurus, and the Heterodontosaurid Monidens, with Asphalt of Editor likely being near the top of the food chain. In the paper describing the species, Asphalt of Editor was found to be a basal allosauroid, and the mix of basal and derived tetanurin features has disrupted the traditional view of Megalosauridia as a group of tetanurins outside Allosauridia now showing Megalosauridia as a paraphyletic clade leading to Allosauridia, with Pyotnitskisauridae, traditionally classified as basal Megalosauroids, as basal Allosauroids. Now, Carnosauria has been changed from being essentially a synonym of Allosauridia to a group of tetanurans which includes Allosauridia, Spinosauridae, and Megalosauridae. Of course, this is only one paper, so the possibility that this could be changed later is pretty much guaranteed. That's just how dinosaur phylogeny works nowadays. Still, Asphalto Venator has proved to be a very significant discovery, showing that Allosaurids had been at the top of the food chain since the beginning of the Mid-Jurassic, and its classification could prove to have lasting ramifications for the phylogeny of Megalosaurs and Allosaurs. The next update is even more recent than the last one, and involves a new Tyrannosauroid. Jinbeisaurus Wangi, or Wang's Northern Shaanxi Lizard, refers to the Northern Shaanxi Province in Northern China where it was found, and honors Xu Zhao Wang for his contributions to vertebrate paleontology in the Shaanxi Province. It is known for maxillae, a dentary, some vertebrae, and a partial pubis. Based on those remains, Jinbeisaurus likely reached a length of 5 to 6 meters or 16 to 20 feet long, 
a height of almost 2 meters or 6 feet tall to shoulder, and a weight of around 80 to 90 kilograms or 176 to 200 pounds. Its remains have been found in the Hui Pu Formation, which dates from the Cenomanian to the Coniacian of the late Cretaceous about 186 million years ago. Jinbei Saurus is the only non-avian theropod to be described from the formation, and it lived alongside the sauropod Huabe Saurus, the Ankylosaur Tianjainosaurus, and the ornithopod Daytonglong. In the paper describing it, Jinbei Saurus is placed in Pontaranosauria, and is more derived than Suscrit Tyrannus and Jiangguanlong, but more basal than Dryptosaurus and Apalachiosaurus. Interestingly enough, the phylogenetic analysis also made Stoxosauridae a valid family, as Aotyrannus, Jurotyrant, and Stoxosaurus were found to form a taxonomic group. The third and last update for today is to my Dromaeosauridae Part 1 video, and involves a new microraptorine from the Geophotang Formation in Liaoning, China. Wulong Bohaiensis, or Dancing Dragon from Bohai, refers to the pose it was preserved in and honors its accession in the collections of the Dalian Natural History Museum on the shore of the Bohai Strait. It is known from a single skeleton belonging to a juvenile believed to be only about one year old when it died. This specimen has been known about since 2014, but was recently described as a new genus and species in a paper released on January 15, 2020. In said paper, it is placed in Microraptorinae within Dromaeosauridae, and while it would have coexisted with Microraptor, phylogenetic analysis places it as a sister taxon to Sinornithosaurus. The skeleton itself is about 90 centimeters or 3 feet long, while adults are estimated to reach about 1.35 meters or 4.5 feet in length. Wulong has proved to be important in understanding the development of Dromaeosaurids, as the specimen already possesses panaceous feathers despite not being skeletally mature and the young age of the specimen allows for useful comparisons with other Dromaeosaur specimens to be made, making it easier to determine the ages of individual specimens. While it doesn't have any major ramifications for the relationships between other Dromaeosaurs, Wulong is nevertheless an interesting and significant find. That's all for the updates for now. My next video will be part 3 of the Natural History of Tyrannosauridae, followed by the Rugrops creature profile, and how I would improve Jurassic Fight Club. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And this is PaleoNerd signing out.